So I learned something recently. I learned that antelope and certain kinds of deer can jump like 10, 12, 13 feet high, like over enormous fences, over enormous all kinds of things. However, if you put that antelope or that deer behind a fence that they cannot see, they will not jump. Even if that fence is only a third of the height of what they are capable of doing. If they cannot see what is on the other side of that fence, they will not jump. So what does an antelope jumping over a fence or not jumping over a fence have anything to do with faith? Well, for me, it has a lot of applications. When I heard that, it immediately went to something that I can relate to. Because sometimes I am called to do things but I can't see how to get to the other side. And so I struggle with whether I'm going to make that leap. I struggle with how I am going to do that and say, oh, okay, I know, God, you are calling me to do that, but I can't see because there's a fence right in front of me, and it's a fence of my own making. Something inside of me that says, you don't know exactly what's on the other side. You don't know exactly what's going to happen. You don't know what risk is going to be when you get on that other side. And so I don't necessarily jump over a fence that I could very easily clear because it's not that high and it's of my own creation. Have any of you ever experienced that where God or something or yourself is driving and calling you to do something, but you're just like, I don't know what the consequences of that are going to be. I, I know what the challenge is going to be if I do it. I know the work effort it's going to take, and I know there's a risk involved in doing it, but I don't know how it's going to turn out, so maybe I won't do this. Maybe I won't do this. I'm just guessing I'm not alone on that one. Anybody out there ever feel that way? Well, there we go. <laughs> I actually wasn't even calling for a vote there. That was, a, that was wonderful. That's what this scripture is actually about. That is what this scripture is actually about. About. So let's go ahead and dig into that and see what we get today. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval, and by faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. If you were here last week, you heard us talk, and if you're here like pretty much any week that I preach, you'll hear us talk about how important context is. Knowing what it is that we are reading. Are we reading a gospel? Are we reading from the New Testament or from the Hebrew Bible? Are we reading when we're in the Hebrew Bible from the Torah or the Psalms or poetry or laments? What are we reading? In this case, we are reading a letter. Just like last week where we were reading a letter, 2 Corinthians, Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, the church in Corinth. Here we are reading a letter that's called the letter to the Hebrews. So again, we are reading what? Somebody else's mail. We're reading somebody else's mail, which means there's context to this of who's writing it and who it's being written to and why it's being written in the first place. So let's talk about that. What we have is a group of people in an early church that Paul helped establish. In this case, Unlike a lot of the other churches, which ha happened to be more Romans and Gentiles, this was a church that was established around a group of people who were primarily Jewish, hence the letter to the Hebrews. And these folks had this enormous joy when they first signed up for following Jesus. And they're thinking, all right, we've got these wonderful five people, and they're all thinking to themselves, wow, this is wonderful, we're following Jesus and there are blue skies, and there are puffy clouds, and the sun is out, and we're following Jesus, and this is great. And then they get out into the world, and they're like, whoa, <laughs> this isn't what we expected. This is hard. And they had people attacking them, right? We have these people just like jerks. How could you abandon the Jewish faith and go follow this fraud? Or the Romans saying, you are doing something that is undermining our authority, and their lives were at risk, and people were punished. Remember, Paul was stoned multiple times. Paul was whipped. Paul was in prison. 
And, but he didn't, he didn't have this reaction. The, he, just, he just went and kept plowing through. But people were all of a sudden faced with all these challenges and difficulties. And they're like, oh my gosh. And they are at a point where they're ready to turn back and give up. Because it's too hard and they can't see the other side. They can't see with everybody in their face. They can't see with all these difficult things happening how they are going to get through this to a better place. And so Paul says, look, have faith. Have faith. And he said, in verse 1 again, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, for the conviction of things not seen. But Paul in addition to trying to give that definition, knows they're not just going to take his word on that with one line that talks about faith and what hope is. So he's got to show them something. And since they are people from the Jewish tradition, he knows where he is going to draw. And so he says, don't give up. And they're like, why not? They're like, because God has always been faithful to us. God has always been faithful. And so Paul starts to go down a history of people who have taken chances, jumped over enormous fences in faith, and then had their faith confirmed. Had their faith confirmed. He starts with Noah. Now, I don't, to be honest, like, I don't know that Noah was bald and, you know, had like a little soul patch there, but it doesn't say he didn't. So I got to have a little fun with that one. So we got Noah, but he's got his hammer. Noah didn't have the weather app. Right? Didn't have weather.com, didn't have, you know, people up there in histrionics telling exactly, didn't have radar, didn't have all these things that we have to know exactly when the weather pattern is going to go exactly over where our house is. He didn't even have the farmer's almanac. But God said, I need you to build an ark. And you know what Noah got? A lot of pushback. Can you imagine, honey, I'm going to stop farming, and we're not going to be able to eat as much, and I'm going to go tear down all the wood around, and I'm going to build an ark. Why? Because God said there's going to be a lot of water, and we need to build an ark. I can tell you how that conversation would go in my house. Actually, that's probably not true. She's usually ahead, ahead of me on the faith thing, so... Uh, but, you know, and other people, they're like, what are, you, what are you doing? The kind of, and he's like, and Noah's like, okay, I'll do it. He had faith that what God said was going to happen, and it did. And so he was validated in that faith and acting in that way. Abraham had a really cool setup when he's introduced. He's in a great position. He's with his people. Things are going very well for his people and his family. He's got plenty of things. And things are going really well. And then God's like, I need you to go on a really difficult journey up mountains and around different things. And it's going to be really difficult. But I promise you at the end of it, it's going to be wonderful. And you're going to be the father of multiple faiths. And you are going to be the one. And great things are going to happen. He couldn't see what was going to happen and how that was going to happen. But he trusted God. And trusted that feeling that he got when the Spirit touched him and said, okay, I'm going to leave the comfort of what I have and go do something that I don't know what is on the other side. And then Moses. Moses was set up. Moses was adopted into the home of Pharaoh, the number one powerful person in the entire world at that time. Could have lived just in the lap of luxury, could have just kicked back, and God's like, okay, now I need you to betray all the people who are powerful. Right? Sounds like a good start to a good plan. Let's, a, let's, go a ban let's go against all the people who are powerful, who have all the weapons, who have all the money, and you're really comfortable, and I'm about to make you really, really, really unpopular and really, really uncomfortable. And as a matter of fact, the people who are going to follow you are going to be really difficult on you and really hard on you. Anybody signing up for that? Neither did Moses at first. Moses said no a lot of times before. He finally said yes, but finally he said, all right, God, I will do it on faith. Not because Moses knew what was going to happen at the end, but on faith. And through doing it then was validated and assured. And Paul is saying to the people in the letter to the Hebrews, look at all the history, look at all the faithfulness of God. And then 
Paul goes in to talk about Jesus and some other people in there and goes through and says time and time again, people have made the difficult calls and when they make the difficult calls on behalf of God and the path of the kingdom, God always, always delivers. Didn't say it wasn't difficult. Didn't say it wasn't brutal but always, always, always delivers if you act on that faith, not on the stuff, the obstacles that you can see, but on the stuff that you cannot see. Every time. Then it says in verse 3, By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made up from things that are not visible. Making the case, very early, before science proved this, by the way, that things that we can't see are more real than things we can. Right? That ultimately, when God created the universe, and for those of you who are here a couple weeks ago, you've seen this board before. Yes, I'm repeating the use of the board. God creating the world. God creating the world. They had to take that on faith. Why? because they weren't there when it happened. Just like you weren't there when it happened, or you weren't there when it happened, or I wasn't there when it happened. I have to take this on faith that God created the world, but knowing that something had to create it. Because there had to be something there at the beginning, something we can't see, something we couldn't see that was so big and so much more important that it could create than the things that we can see. The trees, the apples, the kale, the sun, the moon, the stars, all the beautiful things created by things we cannot see but have faith that they exist. The strength of the destiny that you can't see being more important than the obstacles that you can see right in front of your face is Paul's point to them drawing on the power of God, the power of Jesus, the power of the history of the faith to say, you can trust us because God has been faithful time after time after time after time. The people who were there, who Paul was writing to, are looking at this fence just as assuredly as that, as that deer is looking at the wall that it won't jump over because it can't see what is right ahead. And what is right on the other side, Paul is saying, is something beautiful and wonderful and good. And if you can do this, if you can make this jump, if you can climb, if you can jump, if you can dig, if all you can do is crawl to get there, when you get there, you'll see it. And you can be assured of that, not because you can think through it, but because God, time after time after time after time, has delivered for everybody God has ever asked to do a leap of faith. Remember, a number of weeks back, we talked a little about faith. Faith is active. We are called. It's constantly moving us forward into bigger and bolder things. All right, we said we don't do a sit of faith. We don't do a sit of faith. We do a leap of faith. We take bold moves because if it's not bold moves, we don't need any faith to do it in the first place. And so Paul and Jesus in the scriptures constantly tell us, if you need to get over that wall, climb higher. If you need to get to me, jump farther. Dig deeper into yourself to be able to do that. And if all you've got, if all the energy, if all the willpower, if everything can just get to crawl, just crawl. Because sometimes that's all that we can muster in the moment. So my question to each and every one of you is this. What is that wall in your life that is keeping you from getting to where God wants you to go right now? What is that thing in your life, that self-constructed wall, that you know there is a tug 
somewhere in you from the Holy Spirit, from the living Jesus, from something, just from something you can't even identify, from your bones, from your heart, from your stomach to your brain, from somewhere, from God, that is calling you to do something. And you're like, I can't see what the result is going to be, but I know what the cost is, and so I'm not ready to go that. And that's scary, and that's, it's uncertain, and I don't know what the result is going to be. Do it. What is that wall in your life right now keeping you from doing the thing that God is calling you to do? Because that is what the world needs right now. That is what your heart needs. That is what your soul needs. That is what your family needs. That is what your neighbors needs. That is what this community needs. That is what this community of faith needs. That is what this country needs right now is that thing that you are being called to do that you can't see, the, the, that the results are automatic because there's a wall of some kind that doesn't allow you to see the result. But Paul and Jesus are saying every time from Noah to Abraham to Isaac to Jacob to Moses to Jesus, every single person who does this, their faith is rewarded. Faith is rewarded. So what is that wall in your life that you need to jump over even if you don't know what's on the other side? What is that wall in your life that you need to tear down or crawl around or dig deeper into yourself to dig under that to get to that side? Because you need that. We need that. And the world needs that. Amen.